All right, we live. Yeah. No fucking uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Step Simon. Yeah. Finally got you in the chair, man. How you feeling? I'm good, bro. I'm good, man. How you? I'm good, bro. I mean, I see the big old gold chain on you, so shoot, bro. I know you're good. Oh, shoot. Man. This shit fake. No, no, I'm fucking around. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Sorry, we're talking about it. Nothing fake about the steps, dude. But no, nah, bro, um, let's just hop straight into it, man. I want to know where you're from, bro. Man, step sign, man. Um, from North North Tulsa, bro. North Resident Tulsa. from the city of North Tulsa. And that's yeah. crazy you say that because I say this. You do the best job speaking for North Tulsa. You represent hard in your music. You always you always use some kind of imagery, sensory imagery yeah. in your music, referring to a why. You always represent. You know, I try. Hard. I try, bro. Um, I try to represent the pre-gentrified version. Explain that for the dummies. It's going to be different. Uh, North Tulsa is going to be different, man, um, in a few years. Just Tulsa in general is going to be different. In the, um, it's going to be like every other big city. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the identity and the um, authenticity that we had, I try to keep that in my music. So yeah. if you grew up in that or if you remember that, you can hear it. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's the really the Tulsa I represent, not even just North Tulsa. I try to represent that Tulsa. The yeah, Bells, that's true. The Bells ain't North Tulsa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just McClure games every Sunday ain't just North Tulsa. So um, just that type of element, I try to keep that. Whether I'm talking about it or not, I want you to feel that. You know what I'm saying? So, the, with the gentrification coming to North Tulsa, do you see that as a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good, it's a it's it's a good thing and a bad thing for everything, bro. Everything yeah. in life, bro. So the good thing is, it's actually gonna be shit out north. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You you get your grocery store, you get your whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The stores and all this all this shit that people complain about not having. You gonna have it. Mm-hmm. The bad part is it's not our money. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not at the at the root at the bottom of when they when they hit the paperwork and shit like that. Yeah. And what is it doing for the community and things like that? It's gonna raise property value and move people. People gonna be living in Coweta and Glenpool yeah. and just like Dallas, bro. Like people living in Grapevine and Arlington and. Yeah. Like all the outside cities, not really just people in Dallas like that no yeah. more. Not actually Dallas people. It's gonna be like people gonna be living in, in the outside places, and it's gonna be different, bro. I already see it coming. Yeah, but, yeah, that's true, bro. You, what can you, we, I try to stop it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pay my bills, to, yeah, like to yeah. keep my damn shit on. So I mean, it's, it is what it is, though. I heard that. Okay, well, look, since we're talking about the North Side, let's talk about Black Wall Street. And more specifically, let's talk about Steph Simons born on Black Wall yeah. Street, bro. Yeah. What inspired you? Man, um, honestly, bro, it just hit me. Um, I want to say 2015, 2016. Oh, no, nah, yeah. nah, 2017, bro, I wanted to make an album about Dickie Rowling and um, about Dick Rowling and just make it about him mm-hmm. and um but my homie O'Malley made like an album called Unsung that was like very the sound that I was trying to go for and I was like I don't want to yeah. do that so I wanted um so I switched it and Born on Black Wall Street came for more so of the relevancy now and how mm-hmm. we carry ourselves and how we need to carry ourselves going forward and what's going on in Tulsa now because we still got black businesses and we still spend with each other. Yeah. It's just not put, it's just not in your face for mm-hmm. people to be like, damn, this is Black Wall Street, but it really is like an underground society of black owners and local owners mm-hmm. that really fuck with each other. And I just wanted to make the soundtrack for that entrepreneur, for that person that makes shirts, for that person that got a snow cone shop, I want, like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. You can be a personal trainer. That's a black business. You know what I'm saying? If you're black. Or it's a local business if you're not black. I just wanted to make the soundtrack for 
that. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. So even if you ain't got a business, even if you're at home writing one, I want this the album that need to be playing mm-hmm. while you writing that. While you writing that that plan, that business plan. So um, that's what Born on Black Wall Street is. Uh, of course, it's about the side you know what I'm saying I touch on everything yeah it's really three three ways to listen to it if uh-huh. you if you like a super history Is think piece it? motherfucker that wanna like dig into it like yeah. it's 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 a lot for that if you're looking for something that ride and you just don't know nothing about Tulsa or whatever it's for them too that yeah. it's just good music but it's, it's it really got a backstory and you just really gotta know what's going on it's like a, if you know if you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? So Okay, so I, I really got a, a few questions pertaining to the album, but first I want to ask you, no offense, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, but what qualifies you to speak on Black Wall Street? What qualifies me, man, is my, my ancestors, and not even going that far, bro, just going back to my grandma. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These, these are the people that made noise and in the city, just my uncle right now, he runs every black rodeo that go on in Oklahoma, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My, uh, like, my grandma made beer, like homemade, beer homemade, like everybody knew like my grandma, bro. Like when my grandma passed and I seen like just her funeral line, yeah. like this is, this is just the first time I'm telling this, bro. Like her funeral line was long, like Biggie. <laughs> type, like you know what I'm saying, bro. Like, like the like the line, bro. Like the cars in the line going down the street, and I was just like, damn. Like, who the fuck was my grandma? Yeah, like, how dope, bro. you know what I'm saying? And like, that's when I was like, I want to have that kind of impact oh, on yeah, the city. Bro. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So it, that's bro. that's what that's really where I like get it from, bro. Like, I want to have that impact. Same thing go for my mama. When my mom's passed. She had the same thing. Like, yeah. I want to be. I want to have that kind of impact. Just people going up to the podium and just talking about yeah. uh, everything that she did, bro, That's and dope. for the North. And I'm like, this is just my grandma to me. Yeah. You're like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So after I'm hearing all that, and, and even my uncles are still alive right now, just family members, bro. Like, I'm really from this shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's dope, Like, bro. it ain't no just... Let me jump up here and like talk about this shit because it's hot. Like I'm really from this shit. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like really, really rooted in it. So yeah. that's that's the answer. Okay. So another thing that's kind of pertaining to just Black Wall Street in general. Um, as a black person, do you feel like Black Wall Street thrived off of people doing favors for each other or they thrived off of people investing in each other? Well, here's the thing, bro. Everybody wasn't rich and black, if, whether you had a business or not. Like, um, so I think, like, even if you owned a burger shop, it's just, it wasn't a, I think people get the, the, the fantasy of it and think everybody was like super rich yeah when really it was more about everybody just having something that was theirs it's real you know what I'm saying so whether I owned a laundry mat and I made equivalent to what I make now yeah for this three bedroom house like it was my laundry mat that was doing it as opposed to me punching a clock for somebody so in order to maintain that stability, I don't think it was favors, bro. I just think we were kind of forced to spend with each other because of segregation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of had to come to my grocery store. Yeah. In today's world, if I had a grocery store, I hate to say it, but people going to go to Walmart before they trust me. Mm-hmm. Whether I'm getting my same apple from the same tree Walmart get it from, they're going to go to Walmart because it's Walmart, you know what I'm saying? So I think we just kind of got a mental block of why we're not spending with each other right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I wanted to get your opinion on that one because yeah, that was the it's thing. Not a, uh, it's not a, I don't think it's a favorite thing. People did favors and bartered, yeah. you know what I'm saying, bartered system, but 
people spent, bro. You yeah. had your shirt ten dollars, people paid ten dollars. Like you know what I'm saying? It was just a natural thing, but money wasn't that. A dollar was worth like twenty dollars back then. Yeah, so it yeah, wasn't yeah. like a big thing. It was yeah. just it was natural. Yeah. So. Okay, so another question about the Black Wall, going on Black Wall Street project. Did you like it? And I asked that because you know when Dre dropped, I want to say like the Chronic and Sub yeah. saying he didn't even like it. So. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> bro. All right, this is this is actually the first album that I liked that that I liked to me, bro. Um, just because I found out my I found my delivery, bro. I've been rapping for like twelve years. Yeah. Just off the fact that I like to rap. Yeah. But this album, I actually felt like. I found my voice where I can just rap on the spot and just, just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like go. So, because I didn't write nothing. It was just, I went to Houston. I went to Houston for a week and he gave my homie made the beats. Like, I did, I did, I did half the album here. I did half the album in Houston. You know what I'm saying? So, the ones I already did here, I wrote them on my bike, just yeah. riding. You know what I'm saying? Went to the studio, knocked them out. In Houston, when it's like a time schedule, you ain't got time to be just writing the hard day. Yeah. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you go in there and you want to let Houston niggas know how the fuck we coming. So, I'm yeah. like, nigga, I'm about to show y'all <laughs> niggas how we. Like, see, yeah. I'm about to bust. So, I kind of found my delivery just not thinking about shit. So, after I heard that, I'm like, damn, this is, this is my favorite album. Yeah. Even though I know I can do better. At the same time. It was nice, bro. But it's my favorite album. Keith do a good job of letting people get a good hear of it, too. Bro. Yeah, so that's... Shout out to yeah, bro. Keezy. I got plans for, for Keezy and Indie Pot. And yeah. just making that bigger. And helping. And helping. So... Okay, so, bro, when you listen to a Steph Simon record, you don't hear just like, you know what I'm saying, no... Mumble rapping, <laughs> you know, lollygagging, making words, yeah. drum type of person. Bro. Yeah. You really like like somebody who influences people. Why? What make you? What make you come the way that you come in opposed to what's trending right now? I don't know how to do that. I just not. I'm not good at it. Yeah. I'm gonna stick to what I'm good at. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Go for what just, you know. I don't got no problem with none of that stuff. I listen yeah. to it. I'm not good at it. Yeah, as simple yeah. as that, bro. Like, that's fair. I tried it. I tried it young. Not even, not even what's popping now. Just what was popping then yeah. when I was when I was seventeen. Yeah, I would try that shit, and yeah. I wasn't good at it, bro. So, like, I st- stuck to what the fuck was natural to me. You know what, what I'm saying? Right. And I stay in that box. And, so, who some of your who some of the people that you listen to love like? Not just some of you listen to. Who's some of your inspirations in music? Uh, shit, bro. Inspiration wise, bro, I gotta cut on some hoes. Like, okay, okay, you know yeah. See, that's. A, I feel like you listen yeah, to some I gotta cut on or something some hoes, like that, bro. Like, I gotta cut on some hoes for inspiration. Um, Biggie, my favorite rapper, bro. Yeah. I st- as far as studied. Yeah, like as far as like technique or yeah, why not even just the songs, bro? Just how who he was as a person, bro. Swag, like, huh? He just felt like he had real friends in the yeah. city, like real people knew him, like real. Man, I remember I used to go to the store with Biggie every for like yeah. just shit like that, bro. Yeah. He was a real homegrown nigga from around the way, um, outcast, bro. Oh yeah, uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I think I, I'm I'm 31, bro. So you got to keep in mind. These are all the people I'm listening to in my Walkman. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But today, uh, bro, I like Kendrick. Okay. I, I like Sway Lee. Okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting that one. That's like, dope. Like, you must got something I like on Sway Lee, about. bro. I like Sway Lee. Um, I like J.I.D. Um but I, I don't really get into too many people, bro, because yeah. I'm very Tulsa, not even Tulsa biased, bro. I'm very Oklahoma-based, bro. I don't really know that much people unless yeah. I'm with Dom or yeah. somebody that listened to him and yeah. they put me on, OD put me on yeah. with these people, bro. Like, honest, to be honest, bro, that's how I be knowing about people. Yeah, I'm saying to be bro. honest. Nipsey. 
Nip- I say yeah. Hov and Nipsey, bro, because like Nipsey kind of in that Hov. Uh, he following that path, Currency. Currency yeah. is my favorite rapper, though. I yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? I feel like when people talk about, like, you know, a certain type of genre or artist, you fit in, like, the whole Nas, Nip, I wish. pop kind yeah, bro. I genre wish. opposed to all these guys. I wish, bro, because I, 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 I'm a student, you know what I'm saying? I try to separate my shows mm-hmm. like them. I wish um, about that, too. And, and I try to separate my music like them, and and like, I mean, shit. I just try to stay in my lane, bro, like they do. So. Bro, you such an interesting person. I only had, I got all these questions, but I only got three in. We already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how long you want to do it, I mean, bro? I'm like, keep it going, bro. I'm gonna have bro. to break it down into like three pieces or whatever. I, I got a lot to talk about, bro. Yeah, this, I, I want to keep because these is all questions that come from me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Let's so, go. Keep move. Okay, so let's talk about Tulsa, bro. Why are you still in Tulsa, bro? Um, I'm being patient. Um, it's a lot of work that mm-hmm. need to be done. Um, I know I'm a, you know, I, and I feel like I'm, a, and I know I'm a great person to, uh, like, put on when I do move around. Mm-hmm. Um, every time I'm out of town, bro, I don't even tell them me. I say Google Tulsa rap. Yeah. I don't even say me. Yeah. I just want them to Google Tulsa rap. They yeah. gonna find me yeah. anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I just want to kind of be a messenger because I feel like I strike a chord when I, when people perform and I try to get, I try to anyway. Yeah. But when I tell, like, I'm in Atlanta, Google Tulsa rap. Like, I just pray a dope nigga pop up though that's my only thing like I just want to like I just want to I need to be like Google King Spence YouTube or some shit like that I need to switch that up I just want a dope ass nigga to pop up but uh, that's what I hope for anyway but uh, why am I still in Tulsa bro like I'm I'm honestly not really I move around a lot bro to be honest I'm just I guess my perception isn't isn't how to talk to it, but yeah. I'm, I'm out a lot, not, especially in the Midwest. Yeah, so I, I, I know just, about the show. I'm just not. I'm not there to the. I got. I got to get there. Like I said, I got to get there to the. Why am I not on? I guess, and uh, I don't know, bro. I just need a little bit. To do a little bit more work. Yeah, I'm more self-critical. Like I was I'm more self-critical, bro. I look at me. I feel like I'm just not doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I gotta do a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? And, and I get there, but uh, I think this year, honestly, it's it's popping. You know what I'm saying? Um, the golden year. For me, I want. I, I'm pressuring myself to for it to be because. Um, I think the city I, I feel like the whole city is asking me that question yeah. uh, I feel like everybody's tired of me doing the pony or the yeti or the shrine or the or whatever or you know what I'm saying everybody's tired of the big show they know I can do the big show they know I can sell out the show they know I can drop the good album and yeah. I feel like the whole city is behind me and they waiting like alright my nigga we, we fucking with you but when you gone when you gonna do it? When you gonna get over the hump? So yeah, um, I got play. I got plans and I got plays, bro. So I'm just for the first time in my life, I need an attorney to look okay. over shit. It's you know what I'm saying? Progression, bro. Right, like, shit like that, bro. So I'm 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 looking forward to shit, bro. But at the same time, it might not be me. I might just be a I might just be a trampoline for somebody else to jump off. Well, it's looking real good, bro. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm kind of skip through real quick. You know what I'm saying? We're going to jump down here to the darker part of the interview real quick, bro. Okay. And I want to talk to you about, um, I want to get your opinion on what you thought about the Terrence Curtis Jr. and Baby Shelby case. Bro, I'm, uh, I, I regret when I got on the news, bro that I held back my words when I performed on uh, chapter six or eight or whatever it was. 
I said, rest in peace to Crutch. Fuck Betty, she a line bitch, bro. Like, and that's how I feel, bro. That's what you didn't say? Bro, I like got to the part of saying, fuck, bro, fuck <laughs> Betty. And I was like, Betty, she a line. And I was like, man, I'm a bitch ass nigga, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was like, fuck, bro. I ain't Tupac yet. Because Tupac would have been yeah. like, fuck that bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I held back, bro, because I'm like, <sighs> I, I don't know if I ain't there yet. I don't want to fuck up no opportunity. Yeah. I don't know what I was fucking worried about. But fuck, I create my own opportunity. Yeah. I don't know why I was worried about that shit, bro. And I was <laughs> mad because I'm like, Nigga, I create my opportunities. Not these motherfuckers. Yeah. Why well, I didn't say that shit? So, I'm battling myself on my way out of there, bro. Yeah. Like, fuck her, bro. Fuck that whole situation. That Damn. shit happened right up the street from my house. Uh, you came over before we shot outside, yeah. after whatever. That shit happened right up there on the corner. And me and D, we was actually pulling out, bro. Me and DV. And we thought it was a car wreck, bro. And mm-hmm. I heard, I found out about what the fuck. Like... I was just like, man, it was it was really fucked up because it was in the height of police killing a lot of niggas. Like, it wasn't just random. It was just, yeah, it's it's just I don't I didn't know him, but I know people that did, and this is a stupid ass situation, bro. And I hate everything that is. I hate anything coming up, bro. And I don't yeah. even hate people like that. But man, I don't fuck with ugly, bro. I don't fuck with it, bro. I don't fuck with the city for that. Honestly. Okay, so I'm gonna just ask you one or two more about this situation. Uh, what I'm gonna ask you is: Is that still a relevant topic in the world today? Just that case? Hell that? yeah! Hell yeah! That shit. It's still going on just because she's teaching police what to do now in situations. You know what I'm saying? So the person that fucked up and made a mistake and killing somebody out of fear is now teaching other people how to handle that situation be fucking scared of of the big black dude you know what I'm saying yeah so unless he fucked up and was like I should have did this but either way fuck you like he ain't coming back from that you know what I'm saying from your mistake well, still, this one, you didn't yeah, break his no. leg like right? yeah. you killed him you know what I'm saying so it's still relevant to me yeah. Like whether I acknowledge it or I'm not on the internet still, you know what I'm saying, saying rest in peace, but it's still a it's still a yeah. heavy subject, bro. Yeah. Like so Well you knocked out my other question about that. Um all right, let me jump back up to the top real quick. <laughs> all right, so um you and Tulsa would you say that you're a local artist? Would you be offended if somebody called you a local artist? No. All right, all right, all right. So, I, I know you ain't a local artist, so I ain't going to be the one who made that mistake of calling uh-huh. you a local artist. I mean, it's, it's too many rappers, bro, to... It's easy to fucking not know. Yeah. If you don't follow me and really just... All right, knowing what's going on in my world, you're going to call me a local rapper, bro. Yeah. I don't really care. Cause I'm going to LA next week. Yeah, like yeah, in real yeah. life, you know what I'm saying. So it don't make me no different, yeah. bro. Like it's tight. Bro. I'm coming back though. It's I tight. live here, bro. I want to live here, bro. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to live in LA. Yeah. I want to live in the. I want to have. I want to be comfortable in the city of the lowest cost of living, bro. It's tight. For now, shit. Like yeah, bro. <laughs> a fifty thousand dollar advance in LA. That's bad. That's not good, bro. Um, and that's what niggas here, get. Here, you yeah. you rich for like three years, bro. Yeah. And you really got time to make some shit shake, bro. Yeah. I don't know why niggas are so amped up and moving to New York and getting a fifty dollar fifty thousand dollar advance, yeah. and you still living in the fucking small ass Airbnb, bro. Like yeah. you know, paying two thousand a year. Like they, I, I don't think people understand the numbers yeah. like for these for these big cities and. And with gentrification and us getting all these big city things now, like, mm-hmm. bro, we just toured, like, these these used to be country towns. Like, it's going to be like, like I said, bro, a Texas artist, there's so many Texas artists that are local Dallas artists that can Fort Worth, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Beaumont, Shreveport. Like, they can hit all these mm-hmm. t- 
Texas cities, and we're gonna be able to do that soon. Yeah. We at, we at a, it's gonna get to a point where we don't have to leave Oklahoma. Yeah. We can just build a relationship with Texas and Denver yeah. and Arkansas. Yeah. And, and trade with, trade weed and and rap, bro. <laughs> like yeah. that's what it's going. That's how it's going to be, bro. So I don't trip, bro. Yeah. As long as as long as my lights is on, you can call me the localist nigga live, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever. So do you feel like here in the town you get the recognition you deserve, you deserve, or you're a little slept on? I don't feel slept on, bro. Yeah, I don't think that's. Slept on, I don't bro. feel slept on, bro. I'm actually like, I don't feel slept on. Like if you don't if you don't know me, you can it's easy to if you if you if I don't feel slept on. Yeah. If you're sle- if you're sleeping, it's easy to catch up. Yeah. When you find me, you can come see me and get caught up to speak yeah. that day. Yeah. You're gonna be like, damn, why well, you know all these people was here. Yeah. For this. So, you know what I'm saying? Like shout out to everybody that like come out, whether you fans or homies. Like you can yeah, you can get caught up real quick, so you can sleep on me. I'm not slept on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Okay, so would you say that you would you say that you're the face of Tulsa of the Tulsa hip hop scene? The face of Tulsa, not yet. Not I yet. wanna be. So who would you give that that title to? It's open. It's an open title? And okay. I'm going to tell you why it's open, bro. I'm going to tell you why it's open. And I ain't even being humble, bro. I'm being realistic. I'm being real honest, bro. Uh, I put that on this. This this this, this honesty-ass rock, bro, man. I'm being real honest, bro. I say this shit because I sell a lot of albums. I do a lot of shows. I've sold out a lot of shows. I get support. Like... I love all that shit. Mm-hmm. But if I go on, I can still go on Pine and Peoria and be like, who's at it? I can go to the gas station, bro. I can go to Haney's and everybody that walk in that motherfucker, I can go, who's Steph Simon? Who's Steph Simon? Who's Steph Simon? And I, everybody in that, I probably run into like 10 people out of 50 that know me. You know what I'm saying? I go to 71st. I can walk through the mall and be like, who your favorite rapper? Who your favorite rapper? Fuck the internet shit, like in the mall, yeah. or or at a at a Booker T McLean game. You know what I'm saying? I go by that. When them when them kids yeah. is jamming my shit, yeah. then I'm the face of Tulsa. Okay, bro. Like, that's a good way to fuck. Shit. Fuck fifty people on Facebook saying, yeah. like, not fuck them. Thank y'all, for, <laughs> thank y'all for like bigging me up, bro. Yeah. But like, and when it's real, like when it's real, bro. It's 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 the fifteen, the youth, bro. Like they, the not the youth, the elder, the old crowd, the the kids, whatever. Like I got a great fan base, bro, but yeah. not the face yet. Okay. Be okay is the face. Or if somebody come to Kane's ballroom and they call me and be like, bro, come get on stage with yeah. you. That's yeah. the face. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. nobody's there. Nobody really got it like no, not just yet. yet. Not yet. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so is your goal, like right now, like on your vision board in your room right now, mm-hmm. is your goal to be an industry artist or is it just simply to, you know, <clears throat> maintain off of music? Bro, well, my goal, uh, my goal that's wrote down is to be, uh, and I don't even listen to his music, but I fucking love his, what he has for himself, Tech Nine. Tech, yeah. I can't t- I can't tell you two Tech Nine raps, bro. <laughs> but like, what he is or currency? Cur- I know every currency song, but like they have the same type of like status in the rap game, bro. Yeah. They good enough to they good enough to go to the Grammys and pe- everybody, all the artists respect them and be like, this is this yeah. nigga doing it. And they good enough to pop up at a local show, yeah. And like, and kick it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really want to get in the. If it happened, bro, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. But my goal, my goal, is to get. Yeah. Is to is to be in that in that happy little comfortable media. Yeah. I see. And that. rap, bro. Like. Okay, so. 
If you get the opportunity to sign a deal, are you going to take it? If it's Solange, if, it's, if I'm signing with Solange, Solange knows. If I'm signing with uh, Janelle Monet, if I'm signing with Erica Badu, if I'm signing with OPM, if I'm signing with Jet Life, if I'm signing with uh, TDE. Yeah. Like, it depends, bro. It got to be in my likeness. I really want that Solange, though. Like, I'll sign, I'll sign the Solange. Probably, like, No Limit. Some shit like yeah. that. I want to, like, revive something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? More than... I can see those. Like, I want to revive, but I'm about to create my own shit. So, people going to be signing to me. Okay, so let's talk about signing to you real quick. Before I ask that, are you on any kind of deal or anything like that right now? Not yet. Okay, okay. So, for what, attorney. what is World Culture Music? World Culture Music is a collective of, it's a big happy family of, of artists that was putting it down at the Pony and the Yeti and the Crystal Pistol and before all that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And just a big happy collective, bro. It's about twenty niggas, you know what I'm saying? Of like a like a secret society, bro. But yeah. everybody knows, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um that's it's not a label, it's a festival though. Yeah. It's, it's actually a L L C World Culture Music Festival. But um it's not a label though, you know what I'm saying? It's a uh, just a big family and we make music for the world for for the world so who's responsible King Cut King Cut started it yeah that's dope that's King dope. Cut started it bro and I like blew it up kind of accident yeah. <laughs> like cause we, he was re- it was really just a slogan like people be like what kind of music you make I make music for hood niggas and bitches <laughs> or, what kind of music you make I make music for trappers what yeah. kind of music you make? Well, I make world culture music. You know what I'm saying? Okay, for yeah. niggas in Japan that that like right, like that yeah. that are really from Japan. That, that's what we was on. You know what I'm saying? And so the uh, toss the world, toss the world was what I was me and me and Tom. And I was like, bro, it's the second anniversary. Let's do a festival. And I was like, bro, let's call it the World Culture Music Festival. And King I was like, shit, fuck it. So I like. I put I put everything together. It was crazy because I didn't tell nobody it was a festival. Yeah. I didn't tell the venues. I didn't tell the artists. Yeah. I was the only one that, like, yeah. me, me and David Puffin, bro, I used to work with this nigga. The only ones that knew. And so I just booked the dates. I told each artist to be there at this time. I told the venues what I'm like. I'm going to have five artists here. I'm going to have five artists here. But they didn't know. Yeah. Both were booked, which they didn't have to. And that shit just like, Ooh. and I was like, oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> like, so yeah. the next year, the the next year was so popping because the venues was down now, like the whole city was down. Like everybody calling me, like, man, we need to get you on the paper, and we need to like, boom, 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 and like, we want to go ahead and book the dates now. Like they booked yeah. the festival the day after, like the first year in twenty sixteen. The festival was booked the day after. I'm already like getting ready for the second year. And then with the Yeti shutting down, the third year was tough, but fourth year now we're trying to like we're trying to like So it's we just trying to make something better every year. We really just fuck with shows and try to like put give people that's trying to get in trying to I hate when people I hate saying getting the local scene but people just trying to get out there we got some kind of platform that can help them and we trying to actually find during that time of us doing shows during the month during the months we trying to see who good enough to get on this shit cause we just don't want to put anybody yeah. on that stage so yeah. it's a uh, you know what I'm saying so it's a we fuck with whoever bro if they, if they out there doing for themselves though and we, we fuck with them, but that's how we do, bro. We, we rappers, man. <laughs> like we are, we, we helping ourselves, and we trying to help 
help other people, bro. So do you get any negative feedback from the guys who trying to get on that y'all don't necessarily want? Or I do. Like it? Me. So <laughs> like, hey, like, bro, what's, your, what's the message? <laughs> hey, bro, like, I worked at the car center forever. So, like, I used to get cussed out all yeah. the time. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you. Like, all this <laughs> shit. You ain't, you know what I'm saying? I get I get that shit out of time, bro. Yeah. Like, as long as I don't get, like, yeah. actual physical shit, yeah. say what you want, bro. Like, yeah. I'm going a, I'm to... A, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna let you know why and everything. Yeah, like, man, I mean, shit, everybody don't make festival music. Yeah. Like, like I said, people, like I told you earlier, bro, people don't give a fuck if it's a fight or anything or if they, if they, whatever the case, people don't give a fuck about you up all night trying to organize this shit and yeah. losing sleep, trying to put niggas on the right stage. Yeah. And, and niggas is applying late and they want to get in and they ain't following directions on the application and you got to read each app and put everybody's shit on the website and all this work you got to do bro it really take like eight months to fucking do yeah. artists don't give a fuck bro they just want to get on the stage for 15 minutes yeah. and like I tell them like I tell them all this shit bro if you can't respect a no yeah. it's from me <laughs> like, like damn, sure, what you gonna you know do? Saying. Not even that, bro. Like, what you gonna do when somebody else tell you no, yeah. bro? Like, yeah. I, you know I, mean? I did the festival because I kept getting no's, bro. Yeah. South by no, like yeah. A through C no, Hip Hop Tucson no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw my own shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't go fucking get mad. Like, bro, you gotta keep it moving, bro. I'm not the end all be all. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, this is one weekend. Like, yeah. I ain't got no hard feelings, though. If you apply next year and you meet fucking qualification, you yeah. can get on that shit, bro. Yeah. I'm not I'm not even picking the fucking artists on this yeah. shit, bro. That ain't my job. Yeah. Like, I'm just organizing shit now. I don't... We got other people for that now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's start up. Progression. Okay, so... um. I wanted to ask, is Tulsa World still a thing? It's still a slogan. It'll be a thing once I find a fucking password for the fucking page, bro. I can't get back in it, so I don't really get in the motion of doing it, bro. Because I'm like, I can't post shit on it. It's crazy that you can't do shit in real life if you can't find a password. That's crazy, crazy, like, where the world is. Yeah, bro, I feel like, yeah, bro, like, so... I'm trying to find a password for that shit so I can, like, get it. But at the same time, bro, we got so much brands that we just yeah. say Tulsa World, bro. That's just what it is. It's like Harlem World, bro. It's Tulsa World, bro. So. Okay, well, I understand that uh, you got some people wanted to ask you some questions for the interview. Ah, oh, man, I damn near answered all these motherfuckers. Oh, me, bro. And I really still got, like, a bunch more, but I'm just trying to narrow them down to the ones that's like gotta ask bro we can we can we can get it man i hope i'm i hope i'm doing good oh yeah this is a great interview right <laughs> here this is a classic it. for sure let me see bro <clears throat> so i'm gonna start with i'm going to ig bro okay and these niggas is some fuck niggas, bro. <laughs> shout out to my niggas in the city, man. I don't know when this shit coming out. But um, shout out to Daily Devotion. And um, we showing a movie at Circle Cinema on Sunday. I'm sure this is probably already going to be out. So the movie was cracking. Everybody was there. Uh, I'm going to act like it was already a successful night, bro. Because it was, man. Paige Howard. Who was Paige Howard? Looking well. Uh... But my, my homie DZ, he said, when am I getting an iPhone? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when taxis. Okay. Um, a couple months, a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, how many Garth? My homie Spence, bro, my DJ Spence, bro, how many Garth Brooks shirts do you own? So I like to shop at Drysdale's. Uh-huh. I like to shop thrift store. I like to wear, like, rodeo shit, like I said, bro. I yeah. grew up in a rodeo world, country world, 
like yeah. Turley Rodeos, Juneteenth Rodeos, Smokehouse, like. So I like to wear them thick, sturdy ass button downs. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I only own one right now, but more is coming. I got some more coming. Shout out to Fibish. Cause I got more Garth Brooks shirts on the way. Yeah. Um, my nigga, Mizo, twenty on the town. When is the Thirty Three Tips movie going to show? If this is already out, we showed it at Circle Cinema. I'll put it on YouTube when I feel like it's time. Um, paparazzi. Where did you get the visions from the Tisdale hat that I need to be wearing right now? <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. Too, right? <laughs> so, so um, shout out to the hat, man. The visions from the Tisdale hat, bro. That's just funny. So, um, so my grandpa, I went to, uh, I got a lot of family from Lafayette, bro. And, um, Lafayette. Lafayette, Louisiana. Louisiana, bro. So uh, I went down there for my grandpa's funeral, and I just wanted like a souvenir to take home. So I went in his closet, and the hat was just sitting there, bro. And it was just like, it was like like Mike, like the shoe, like it was just like vroom, like it was just like shined on me. And I just like, bro, I'm about to wear this. So I wore it to the funeral, and everybody was just like, man, you look like your grandpa. Yeah. I was just like, man, I'm about to just keep wearing it, and so. It's in my car. So, but yeah, that's where I got the visits from the Tisdale hat from. You need to watch the movie on YouTube and you will know that. Oh, bro, bro, I got one real quick. Yeah. When you gonna bust down the waves on this, bro? So, bro, my hair don't wave up. (laughs) So, because my grandpa is French, like my shit get real prickly when it's low. So it stick up like okay. like picture Mizo's hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. My shit do that, bro. Okay, okay. So I'm coming for I'm coming for my nigga Cuddy, bro. I'm about yeah. to show niggas he ain't the only nigga with pretty hair, and yeah. I'm about to really let my shit like I'm coming for him because he out here flossing, and I'm coming for that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm coming for I'm coming for all the pretty hair niggas. I'm going to let my shit grow out and let niggas know why my kids' hair is so nice. Yeah. I'm coming for you, Cuddy. I'm about to let my shit grow. And, and I'm like, you can probably see a little curl right now. Yeah. I don't really know how it look because I can't see it. Hopefully, it look all right. Yeah, you look but yeah, bro. That nigga ain't even got a rap right now, bro. That nigga just got to hold a chopper and fucking like, Yeah. <laughs> and fucking rap. And like, like, like yeah, yeah bro. That nigga just cheating, bro. Yeah. So, I'm going to try to make it easy for myself like he. Do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, but yeah, man, the um, King Cut with the question: Why do you rap over just the beat? I knew a nigga was gonna ask me that. It was a big old debate on that. The other day. Huge debate, bro. Huge debate. <laughs> Go ahead and calm the water down for everybody, bro. <sighs> bro. Bro, shout out to my niggas, man. Shout out to my nigga Marcel Pete Black. He's a big advocate for not rapping over your fucking vocals. Shout out to my nigga Burns, who's a fucking advocate for not rapping over your vocals. And shout out to uh, my nigga David Puffin. They don't give a fuck if he raps over his vocals or not. <laughs> Both, all these niggas is tight to me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, whether they do that shit or not. So, uh, but me, personally... I don't rap over my vocals because, like, sometimes I might want to rap my second verse first. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I might want to freestyle, bro. Sometimes I might want to just do the first verse in the hook and cut the beat to a rap of fucking something else, bro. Mm-hmm. Like a song I ain't even put out yet, and I want to rap it over that beat, bro. I be I be just doing shit over the beat so yeah. much. If my vocals is on the beat, I can't yeah. do that. Bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I just put a whole, um, I got a whole album on online, bro, on the streaming um, from the from the show with the band, bro, at the Nightingale, bro. Like, yeah. if my vocals is on, I can't record that live mm-hmm. and put the live 
shit on the shit if the, if the vocals is on it, bro. It just give you more. It give you more freedom. It make you a better rapper because mm-hmm. I I don't even record. I don't even overdub now. Like mm. I do some ad libs here and there, bro. But it's one track when I record now because I done got so comfortable with my yeah. with my shit. Just because you picked that up from performing, bro. Yeah. So it's way better. And I'm for not rapping over your vocals, bro. But if you do it, hopefully you want to get there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I know it's a whatever, bro. I don't really, I don't really care what whatever the rappers do. Yeah. But me personally, mm-hmm. I, I'm up there. I'm a rapper, bro. I, yeah. can, I can rap, and I want people to hear what the fuck I'm saying. Because yeah. I want people to leave and feel like they just left or something. Yeah. And and I want people to see the talent. There's talent behind my shit, too. Like, yeah. my rap my rap style, I want people to see that shit. Like I said, I'll change it. I might tell somebody. I might switch the words. I might tell somebody to put their hands up. Yeah. I might shout somebody out. I got a song where I shout out everybody in the room if I know them. Yeah. I freestyle everybody name in the room. Yeah. I can't do that with the... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. I can't do that with yeah. the words on it, bro. So, it's just one of them things, bro. It's my preference, bro. Like, okay. I said, like I said, bro, I like to ride my bike without without training wheels, bro. Yeah. Like, I'll take them off. And I, yeah. You can't be Papa Willie in there yeah. and doing all that shit with your, with your wheels. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, can't it's do real. it. That's what it, that's what it is. It's real. So. That's it for, uh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, bro. My nigga Landry. Shout out to Landry. What's wrong with the Tulsa rap game? Why is it not taking off? Or do you think it'll always be like this? Mm, that's a good question. That's a great question, bro. And uh, <clears throat> here's my answer, bro. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put it in yo. I'm gonna put the power in your hands, Landry, because you don't rap, and not even Landry, bro. I'm gonna put it in everybody that. Feel that way That got that same question Um, I want y'all to look in y'all closet And Find It's a thousand rappers from Tulsa I want you to find Some merch that you have purchased From that rapper If you don't have nothing in there I want you to find a rapper That you like and buy some merch from every last person to feel the same way Landry feel with that question. It gotta be a million of y'all because y'all all ask that shit. So find somebody and buy some merch. Not only buy some merch, listen to that music like you will listen to whoever. Mm-hmm. Whoever you like. Not only listen to that music though. Listen to that music with your homies. And when your homies ask who is that, you tell them. And if your homie say, I don't fuck with Tulsa niggas or Tulsa rappers, I want you to fight for that artist like you will fight for yeah. an artist from Atlanta or, yeah. or Drake. And be like, nah, this nigga hard. This the yeah. next nigga. You know? yeah. I want you to fight like you will fight That's for... Deep. I want you to fight like that. Yeah. Because support is contagious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want you to fight that hard to your homies and, and convert them over into this artist that you like. Yeah. And... Do that. Every last person that feel that way with that question, do that, and then see if the if the Tussle scene is better. You know what I'm saying? Cause it'll. I think it'll be better. I think that's. I think the rappers is doing that part right now. It's real. I think all the rappers is doing that part. I don't think the listeners are doing that part because they're not valuing us like they value somebody else. Fight. You mean that the music ain't good? Nah, I, I, I be doing our part, bro. Because yeah. I bang these. I bang. I can, nigga, I bang a lot of these niggas. Yeah. It's not that. Yeah. And we don't even sound like other niggas. Yeah. Like, so, it's not that, bro. I know we, it's we don't have, we don't have the things that they have, bro. Because like I said, they ain't, if, I don't know what Landry got in his shit. Or, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's people that ask that question that ain't been to one person show. Yeah. Don't know one song. Yeah. Don't know nothing. Yeah. And it's all right there. But they look at them and be like, you right here where I'm at. Why? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to support you. But let a new rapper come out 
and they like them instantly before they even know them, before mm-hmm. they see an interview or anything. They just know somebody told them you need to like them because he next. Mm-hmm. And they be like, he next. So That's treat true. us like that. You know what I'm saying? Not even me, bro. Find somebody you like and do that. Fight for them. It's true, bro. Well, hey, Steph, man, let them know the social media where to follow you, bro. Bro, everything is Steph X Simon, bro. Everything is simple and sweet. Simple, Spell simple. Spell it out bro. for the easiest, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. S T E P H X S I M O N, bro. StephSimon.com. IG, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. All that. So, yeah, man, that's me, man. I hope y'all, hope y'all fucking with it, man. So, yeah, so. You got any shout-outs you want to make, bro? <laughs> oh, shit. Shout-out to my nigga OD, man. He asked me a question, but I ain't answering that shit. <laughs> this nigga gonna tell me to talk about him. <laughs> that's OD. Shout-out to my nigga OD. <laughs> Shout-out to World Culture Music. Shout-out to Tulsa. Shout out to OKC. Uh, shout out to my homies in the Dallas. My homies in Virginia. Yeah. My homies in Wichita. Uh, shit, man. So, so many, bro. So, so many, man. Thank y'all for fucking with me. It's about to go down 2019. Yeah. Put them in the car. Yeah. Well, hey, man, that's Steph signing. <laughs> no plug in. You saw it right here. <laughs> Tell somebody about your favorite local artist support. That's it, bro. That's all. That's all it really is. That's all it is to it right now, bro. Man, we checking out.